welcome, welcome, welcome to my birthday bash. Welcome to Unlocking the Code to Millions. It is my birthday month and we are celebrating all freaking month long. So my actual birthday is tomorrow. I'm excited about it. I'm going to be hanging out with two of my kids. One of my, um, my son, my middle son just joined the military. So he is in boot camp. He actually just graduated and um, he will be going to Texas. So he won't be there with us. However, I get to celebrate with my other two children who are here. We're going to spend the day together. And then I have to go do a fitting for um, one of my suits that I'm getting custom made. I have actually getting like six pieces of custom clothing made for um, my photo shoot and my rebrand, which I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Thank you for the birthday wishes. So we're celebrating all month long and I'm super duper excited about it. And I am doing a thing for my birthday and I love the position that I get to be in. So what I'm doing all month long and why I've been going live multiple times, I usually go live once a week, but I've been going live a couple of times a week. I'm letting you in on my journey to a million dollar business. So over the entire month, I'm going to be sharing behind the scenes as I up level myself, as I up level my brand. I'll also be sharing the lessons that I've learned and the people who have helped me to get there. So plus I've got gifts for you. So I want to put this up so that I can share it with you now. So if you go to, I have it here, bit.ly forward slash unlock millions. It is case sensitive. And I'm also going to put this up for you guys. You can join us in raising money for my birthday and I'm giving you gifts. Woo, somebody give me a, hold on. We got to celebrate that. I'm giving you gifts. I'm giving you thousands of dollars worth of access to the experts, thought leaders, and influencers that I know that have had an impact in my life and in the growth of my business, they're giving you so many things. I'm not going to go through them all. You can just click the link, either the link in the comments, or you can go straight to bit.ly forward slash unlucky millions. Again, it's case sensitive. You have to capitalize both words and you can see all the freaking gifts that we're giving away. It's so much. It's so much. And some people might think I'm crazy for this, but we're going to do it anyway. So in honor of my birthday month, I am hosting the most epic birthday fundraiser and giveaway that you you really want to be a part of. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. The gifts that I'm giving you are super powerful. They're resources that I've gotten donated from 12 different experts that have partnered with me for a really great cause. Again, these are my friends, my colleagues, my mentors. They've all been a part of my rise. And I'm truly grateful that they were so generous and that I have an opportunity to expose you to these industry experts. Um, and they're going to be guiding you through what what are the things that they know that will help you to earn the millions that you've been waiting to create in your business? So that's why we're calling this Unlocking the Code to Millions. As you know, I had a million dollar month last year. If you don't know, now you know. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> I had a million dollar month last year. We've done over $2 million in revenue in the last 18 months. In the last three years, we've done over $3 million, almost $4 million in revenue. That's pretty freaking cool. Part of the million dollar code that I'm giving you access to during this month or sharing with you or the, the code that I have discovered is activating the law of giving and receiving. And the law of giving and receiving states this. This is what the law of giving and receiving states. In our willingness to give that which we seek, we keep abundance circulating in our lives. I'm going to say that again. In our willingness to give that which we seek, we keep abundance circulating in our lives, the abundance of the universe, the abundance of the world. It's all available. It's always available. But are you tapped in? Are you contracted and closed up? Or are you open to receiving? So I made this easy. The minimum donation to get access to every single one of the gifts, including my gift, which I'm, I'm going to share with you in a second. Every single one of these gifts is $46. Why? Because it's my 46th birthday and that's how we do it, yo. 
<laughs> so $46 is your minimum donation, but you can donate as much as you want. So once you click over, you can choose your donation level. So people have donated $100, $500. I think 500 is the max that we've gotten. In between that, $75, all sorts of donations. Um, give at the level which you, you expect to receive. Keep that circulation going. Um, again, if you decide to donate more, just click over and you can decide. What I want you to know is I'm in on this too. 100% of the proceeds are going to be donated to Thrive Rescue Homes, which is a organization that I absolutely love that is all about stopping human trafficking among children. I'm talking babies, yo, not teenagers, not, you know, young women or men, but children as young as like five years old, some younger that are being sex trafficked. It's incredibly insane. So we're going to be supporting Thrive and I am going to be matching whatever you donate dollar for dollar up to $5,000. I am hoping that um, we are able to raise $10,000 so far in the first two weeks. We've raised over $4,000. Yes. <laughs> we have raised, where's my horn? Here we go. I'm going to make some noise. <laughs> We have raised over $4,000 so far for Thrive Rescue Home, and I'm hoping we can hit that $10,000 mark. We have two more weeks left, and what that means to you is that you only have two weeks. You have till May 31st at midnight to access these resources for as little as $46. So partner with us, invite a friend, um, and help us make a difference in the lives of some, some people in the world. We have two more weeks to go. Again, this opportunity is only available until May 31st at midnight, okay? So that's it. Welcome to my official birthday party. I'm gonna take this down so it doesn't distract you. Welcome to my official birthday party, my unofficial birthday party. We're not gonna call it official. My unofficial birthday party and birthday bash. Um, I wanna share something with you today. I wanna actually have a really open, raw conversation about some decisions that I've made in my business. I want you guys to know something. You know, people always say, Shamika, you encourage me. You're, you know, you're so open and vulnerable. And I love hearing all of that from you. It means a lot to me, but I got to tell you, this is just scary. I share some stuff that I, sometimes I just want to keep it to myself. Like even this weekend, spending time with my mom, I'm like, oh, I should probably let people in on what I'm doing on social media. And I'm like, I share so much. I just want to keep this to myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's courageous. And what I know that I know that I know is that I am leading by example. There's not a lot of women who look like me, color of my skin, you know, purple hair, you know, people look a certain way. There's a certain, uh, type that we would say are million, have million dollar businesses are, are millionaires. And I don't necessarily fit that type. And so what I want you to know is that it's possible and I want to show you what it looks like on your own terms, not based on what anybody else thinks it should look like. And I want to show you that you can still be you. You don't have to lose yourself in this thing. You don't have to lose your life. You can still love life and live life and um, sleep at night and all of those things. And so that's why I share so much. Are there times where I'm like, oh, maybe you shouldn't share that? Absolutely. But then I think about you and I think about the people that I was born to serve and I get the courage to do it again and again. So again, today, I want to get a bit intimate and share some behind the scenes and have a real raw and honest and open conversation with you about this journey. But I want to start with this. And so whatever you're doing, I just want you to stop and settle in. Now, if you're driving, keep driving. <laughs> but whatever else you're doing, I want you to just listen and lean in. Um, here's where I want to start. You are coded for millions. You were born to play big. And what I want you to hear is that if you have hit an income ceiling, it's a sign that you're believing things about yourself and your potential that are keeping you playing small and beneath the promises of God for your life. What I'm clear about and what was clear for me when I was in that space, because now I'm in the space of rapid expansion. What was clear for me is this, your identity doesn't match 
Your current identity does not match your next level. You have to think like a million dollar mogul. You have to see yourself in that space. You must recode your identity and recode your mind for how you see the world, how you behave when money is introduced into the situation. It all has to be recoded so that it can match the code that you already have that enables you to create the millions that you so seek. Here's what I know. If you're attracted to me, you're coded for millions. If you have thought or had the hope or the dream or the desire to create millions, to create and shift the wealth code for future generations of your family, most of you are going to be the first. You're going to be the first. You're recoding. You're already coded for it. What I want to show you today is what I've done how I think and how I move that's allowed me to lean into it and allow it to just be. The way you used to think though and what got you to six figures, what has gotten you to half a million dollars, $250,000 in revenue, wherever you are, what has gotten you here won't get you to a million and it definitely won't get you to 10 million or 30 million. I need you to hear me. To get there, you must tap into the million dollar frequency. To become that multi million dollar mogul, you're going to have to peel back layers upon layers upon layers. I'm going to let that sink in. You're going to have to peel back layers upon layers, unlearning the things that had you thinking that six figures was a lot of money, unlearning that money is evil, unlearning that people with money make bad decisions, unlearning and pulling back the layers of shame around how much money you make or don't make, the cycle of proving and convincing. You're going to have to let go of almost everything you now know to become the leader to which millions is the bare minimum, to become the leader to which millions is the baseline. That's why we focus on 100K months, not because I'm trying to find some crazy, you know, marketing tool tactic to use hook. You're going to have to let th- let go of almost everything you know to become the leader to which millions is the floor instead of the ceiling. And it starts today. This is where your power comes from. When you embody your next level and raise your standards, was having a call with a client just before I got on this call, this this, um, training with you, raise your standards. I'm no longer available for X, Y, and Z. Raising your standards and embodying your next level, this is your foundation for generating the most revenue without guilt, fear, or shame. Here's why, love. Hear me. Because making large amounts of money, even in a short period of time, you know, we think it takes time. I was listening to somebody today talking about compound interest and that if you, you know, the more time you give in money, what if you could collapse time? Making large sums of money, even in a short period of time, gets to be your reality. It is available to you. Why do I know that? Because you're listening to me right now. I'll say this again. What got you where you are, whatever revenue amount you're at, whatever capacity you have right now, whatever numbers in your bank account, that's your current capacity. What got you here won't get you to a million plus. Who you are now is nothing. It's a blip compared to the who you will become making millions of dollars to the who you must become if you desire to make millions of dollars. 
here's the thing. You won't even recognize her. You won't even recognize him. You're going to be a completely different person. And trying to hold on to what is while trying to create what's going to be does not work. To get to that point. You guys hear me talk about this all the time. Takes courage. To get to that point takes courage. It takes courage or the courage to break through patterns of behavior that you just do on autopilot over and over and over again that no longer serve you. It takes courage to redefine your normal. Redefine what's normal to you. I was on a call with one of my coaches this morning and they asked what we were celebrating. And I realized I still really, I talk about it with you guys and I'm being the example. I still really hadn't anchored in and celebrated what I've created. And as I begin to say, you know, what I want to do today is I just want to acknowledge what I've done and celebrate myself. And tears begin to flow. Because it's crazy, yo. Like, this is one of those moments where I'm like, do you really want to share this? My recurring revenue is a million dollars. That's insane. If I don't sell another thing this year, I'll make a million dollars cash. New normal is who I be. And so we're going to have to redefine what's normal to you. You're going to have to transform. You're going to have to have the courage to transform. The, the courage to transform the subconscious mindsets and blocks and thought patterns that you have. That's the recoding, right? The courage to recode and restructure on a cellular level, like in your very DNA, as you pass it on for generation to generation, constantly up-leveling and upgrading, that takes courage. And along with that, you're going to need the courage to rapidly expand and the ability Actually, I'm going to say the courage because some of you don't have this. The the courage to receive more than enough and then some. I'm talking about overflow. Like, I don't even need this money kind of situation, (laughs) right? And not just overflow, but what, what I like to call accelerated overflow. It happens so quickly, you don't know what to do. You have That takes courage to allow yourself to receive on that level. It's why a lot of people hit income ceilings. They expand really rapidly, have a huge um, revenue generating month, and then they can't sell a thing. They don't know what's happening. They're like, oh, I did this, you know, I did $30,000 for two months and now I'm at 10. Because something inside of you is saying, you're growing too fast, slow down. It takes courage to allow yourself to receive at more greater and greater capacities. That's going to take courage. And the truth of it is, the truth of the matter is, not everyone is built for that. Not everyone is built to make millions, but you, baby, you, love, you, under the sound of my voice in this very moment, you can't run from it. You can't hide from it. Your soul has been calling you to it since before you were born. It is ingrained in your cells, in the markers of your DNA. You are meant for more. You are coded for millions. And the work that I do is for you. The containers I create are for you. The lessons I teach are for you. The way that I show up is for you. The who that I be It's for you. It's not everybody. I'm okay with that. In my community, which we affectionately call Power Player Nation. So in Power Player Nation, it's the land of giants. It's the land where millionaires are unveiled, released, unleashed. Not creating millionaires. My clients are already coded for millions. We're unveiling them, unleashing them, and we're normalized making millions, but how? 
And this is what I want to share with you today. It starts with your decisions. It starts with your decisions. So I'm going to do a quick lesson on this. I teach this all the time, but I'm going to just share it really quickly here so that we can all be on the same page because I know some of you may have not been exposed to this. Everything that you believe is not really a belief. It's a decision. A decision you made about an interaction, a situation, an experience that you have had at some point in your life, whether it's way in the past or recent past, it doesn't matter, that you anchored in, decided it was a thing, and it became a belief. My audience doesn't have that much money. Sounds like a belief, right? But it's actually a decision that you made. So what happens every time we make a decision based on experience, right? And you get to choose. You have the power to choose what decisions you're making day in and day out. A million dollars is a lot of money. It's going to take me 10, 10 years to get there. That's a decision you make that then becomes a belief. And what happens when you have these beliefs is those beliefs actually drive your actions. So you act out or take action in accordance with your beliefs. That's why your decisions are so important. You take actions in, accord with, in accordance with your beliefs and those beliefs in turn, I'm sorry, those beliefs, you take actions in accordance with those beliefs and those actions in turn create your results. So that's how you get what we call a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's all in alignment with each other. You decide a thing and those decisions filter into your thoughts and it affects the way that you act. So I was talking to a client just a few minutes ago and she goes, she starts telling me the story about the type of clients that she works with. These clients are deep in trauma. These clients are this, and they have all these money issues. I'm like, those are stories that you're telling. They're decisions that you've made. I can guarantee you everyone doesn't have that story, but because you decided it so, it drives her action. So what does she do? She doesn't want to do this. She's like, I want clients who will pay me. So her actions in alignment with the decisions that she's made, they look something like this. She decides her clients don't have money. She decides that they, they have trauma around money and around everything else in their life. And so what she does is she slashes her prices. She gives them extended payment plans beyond the programs. And she cuts the price, $1,000 off. Here's a $1,000 scholarship. Here's a 50% scholarship. And it's a constant thing that she's doing because your decisions and your beliefs drive your actions. And then what does she get? Man, I want to have a six-figure launch instead of a $30,000 launch. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Result is not a six-figure launch. What if she believed that all her clients who she's meant to serve had the money to pay her? Were willing to and, and, and to boot, were willing to pay in full. Now, this might sound like pie in the sky, but this is what we do in my, in my world, in Power Player Nation, and we watch it manifest and, and transform because we decide a new thing. And then we show up differently. We no longer tolerate those things. And then we create the different results. Our $100,000 our $100, month, our $100,000 event, our $100,000 week, our $100,000 launch. You with me? Thank you, Dr. Gail, for putting that up. Decisions, go to your beliefs, become your beliefs. Your beliefs are decisions. Those in turn drive your actions. Those actions dictate your results, period. So you've got to start making decisions like a million dollar mogul before. Can somebody tune me up on Oregon? I said before. <laughs> All my church folks know what I'm talking about. I'm about to start preaching. You have to start making decisions like a million dollar mogul before you actually become one. Hitting a million dollars plus in your business is less about the actions you take and more about who you become. It's more about you becoming the next level version of yourself that can lead at that level, who can create at that level. That's what it's about. When you start to embody that next level version of yourself, you decide, this is who I am. I'm a $30 million business owner. 
And so I'm going to make decisions from that space. When you start to embody that next level version of yourself, when you raise your standards and you say, I'm no longer giving discounts, I'm no longer giving extended payment plans. When you no longer tolerate the things that you used to tolerate, people even asking you for a discount, right? Because remember, your decisions drive your actions. Would you be doing this if you thought for a minute that you would be able to just get another client? No. Or that you thought you didn't need the money if you were a million dollar business owner. No, then you don't do those things. You wouldn't, whatever you wouldn't tolerate as a multi million dollar mogul, you raise your standards and you start now. And then when you decide that it's done and you move with the certainty or move in the certainty of that decision, everything around you will rise to the occasion and meet you there. It will look and seem almost accidental. This is where we get our effortlessness and our ease and our flow because we're on that frequency of the million dollar mogul. We're operating and and calling things to ourselves that are at that level. What will happen is things begin to move in your favor at breakneck speed. You're calling it to you faster and faster. You begin to notice opportunities on the frequency of what you desire instead of the frequency that you do not desire. Most of you are noticing the things you don't want. You can't even see the opportunities around you or take advantage of them because you're not on that frequency. You're not making decisions at that level. The million dollar business, the generational wealth, it all comes into alignment when you raise yourself to that that standard and start making decisions from that place. Let me give you an example. When you're a kid and you're playing, Um, in your backyard, that fence seems huge and you can't see over it. Then over time you grow up and you get taller and taller and taller. You grow up as an adult and you realize, oh, it's not that big. And you can just stand there and you might be able to get on your tiptoes. For those of you guys who are average size, now the fun size people, I can't help you. (laughs) That was mean. I'm sorry, guys. (laughs) I love my fun size people. But you can see over it, right? Um, Think about it this way. I don't know if you've ever done this. Have you ever gone back to your elementary school as an adult? So this happened to me a couple of years ago. I was getting my passport and I was trying to go get like my school records from the school I went to kindergarten at in Los Angeles. And so I get there and I remember I have been playing pictures of this back in my mind over and over and over again, how gigantic that playground was. And in my head, I'm still imagining it that way. I get there and I look through the fence and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so tiny. It's so small. Why does it look so small? Because it's perspective. For a lot of you, because you're operating on a a frequency, not at the million dollar level or the level you wanna play at. It could be multi-millions, what billions, whatever it is, six figures for some of you, because you're operating on a frequency and making decisions at this lower level, the the playground seems gigantic. Getting to a million dollars seems so far away. Getting to six figures seems like it's so hard to get to. But when you raise this frequency, and the level of decisions, you're like, oh, that's not that big at all. I can't believe how easy, my clients say this all the time. I can't believe how hard I was making this and this was so easy. (laughs) Perspective. It's like the kid going back to the playground and realizing it's not as big as you thought it was. What happens when all the things start aligning together on the same frequency as you, you start collapsing time and accelerating your path to get there and your reality catches up with you quickly. It's going to tell you about some client results, but I'm not going to do that. So now that I'm a million dollar business owner, I'm up leveling my thoughts to what would a $10 million mogul do, a $10 million B business owner do. You know, I know my sites for this dynasty that I'm creating is a $30 million business, 
right? So I'm asking different questions. What type of decisions would they make? How would their business model be structured? Will this strategy hold up at $10 million? Is it sustainable? Do you see how I'm making decisions from the space that I'm going to and not where I'm at? Yeah, it's sustainable at a million, but will it be sustainable at 10 million? What do we need to shift in order for it to get there? Does, does our current revenue structure have the capacity to hold $10 million in new revenue? Does it have the capacity to hold the number of clients that we would need to serve to bring that amount of revenue in at that level? Which is actually one of the reasons why I ended up hiring. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Because we were looking into the future and going, okay, if we were to bring in that number of clients, could we service them? So I'm about to do a really open share about some million dollar decisions that I've made in my own business on my journey to a million dollars. And I'm going to give you a little peek behind the curtain at some of the real courageous decisions that I had to make over the last couple of years and the lessons that I learned behind them. And what I hope is that they inspire you, that it inspires you to level up and gives you the courage to begin to embody your next level. This is my gift to you. And I know today is a little bit longer than the other trainings that I've been doing. And I'm just going to lean into this and keep going. For those of you who are going to hang, hang, come back and watch the recording later. Okay. If you can't hang. So the first one that I want to share with you is on the hiring front. Now I see a couple of spaces where this can go wrong, but Hiring team before it was needed. Now, this was a million dollar mogul decision. It wasn't a I want to look good decision. So I see a lot of people hiring team way too early because you want to look like an official business owner, but you ain't got nothing for that team to do. Right. You want to hire an assistant and you want the assistant to fix all your business problems. And you don't even know what your business is doing. You just think it's going to help you make more money because you heard somebody say it. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is looking into the future to the growth of your business and going, in order for me to go here, I need to step there. So when I hired Paula, who was my original and one and only um, employee or person I had on my team, team member, leading up to crossing a million dollars, it was just me and Paula and some contractors that we would engage on projects. So at the time, I was scared to hire her because I'm like, I don't know that I can afford to continue to pay somebody every month to support me at the level that I'm operating at right now. When I hired Paula, I was just above six figures. So this was like five years ago. I was just above six figures. And I'm like, man, giving somebody money like that. But the reality of it is, is was is I was at a, a growth space where I knew that I couldn't take on any more than I currently had. And there was a lot of technology pieces that we were letting um, fly because I was just doing what was needed in the moment to create the revenue, to make the sales and to serve the clients. And so I bit the bullet, brought her on. And then that year I crossed into multiple six figures. It was like that. That cycle came around again just this last year when I was looking at, okay, I have a desire. I have an event coming up. My desire, my goal is by this time next year. So this was last year around this time around May, June. I was like, I want 30 people in my mastermind, 30 plus people, but 30 people minimum in my mastermind, in my highest level program. At the time I had eight. So um. I have another program that I run three times a year. We put people in that. I had eight people in my mastermind. We have sales school, which we have a few hundred people in there. We have about 300 or so people in sales school. Um, so I was like, okay, the mastermind, I want to start to grow that. I want to start to open up my capacity to serve people at the highest level. Because up until that point, I had a, a belief, a decision that that work couldn't be impactful unless it was like 12 people or less in my mastermind. So it stayed that way until I finally got over it last year and said, you know what? I can, I have the capacity to serve more people, but how do I do it? How do we bring in um, that number of people? And so we hired two coaches to support us right on the heels of Game On Live, being prepared for it. From that point, we brought in 40 people, a little over 40 people, I think it was 44 people into the mastermind. Million dollar decisions. You look at the future, you look at what's coming, not for ego's sake, 
Not because it's like, oh, okay, I'm making money, I should hire, but what's next, right? Look at your business and go, what's going to break at the next level? Can I hold the expansion? And most of you aren't looking at it that way. And that's why you experience expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction and roller coaster income because you don't have the courage to make the decision that will allow you to expand into the next level fully. Next decision. Investing in myself to be surrounded by eight-figure business owners. Here's the deal. I'm not telling you this because I want you to invest in my programs. The people who are meant to work with me are going to work with me. I don't need to do any tricks of the trade, right? Um, Or twisting of arms to get people there. Here's the reality. I invest at higher levels to be surrounded by people who are operating on a level that I want to operate on because I want to know how they handle situations. How do they think? What do they talk about? How do they come back from setbacks, failures, and disappointments? What are the decisions that they're making? What do their multi-million dollar decisions look like right now? How are they thinking? I want to know how they do things differently, how they think differently. I don't want to have to figure it out on my own. I spent years and years and years being the smartest person that I know in Google University trying to figure it out by myself investing a little bit here and there. Took the long route. Here's the most beautiful thing that I learned, right? I can ask them. They can give me their guidance. And what I've learned when I'm inside of these communities is what they do well that I want to adopt and what they don't do well that I don't want to adopt. It's being inside of these communities. The biggest lesson that I learned that was the most beautiful thing is that they deal with the same crap we deal with. When you're not invested at that level, the next level that you want to be at where you're surrounded by six-figure business owners or million-dollar business owners or people who are doing the level of revenue that you want to do, you think somehow they have a magic ocean of people who all tell them that they have the money to invest. I have to tell people all the time, honey, we're all swimming in the same pool of people. That's one of the biggest lessons I learned. They have the same problems. They're having the same conversation with clients. They have the same um, people coming into their programs and, you know, taking them for a little while and saying they want to pause their payments. All of these conversations are happening at every level. It was the greatest gift that I could have because the perception was like the playground and the wall. Like there's something different that they have that I don't have. And you start to realize, boo, you can do this too. And so while that decision is scary, and I'm not saying you have to do what I did last year and invest in a six-figure program, but there might come a time for you where that's a thing you need to do. For me, it was that time. But some of you are unwilling to even invest more than $500, and you're wondering why you're surrounded by people who are all struggling to get clients in your business, and then you buy into that story, make a decision about it, and then you that's a belief for you now, and it drives your actions. No one is buying right now. Last year during the pandemic was my biggest year ever in my life. I've never made that much money in my life. I've never had that much impact in people's lives in my life. While there was a a good chunk of people in my industry doing the chicken little dance saying the sky was falling because of the communities they were invested in. My clients were breaking crazy records last year, doing things they had never done in their life because the community they invested in was te- was saying something different, telling a different tale. While it may be scary, and some of you may want people to guarantee you that you can make your money back and all of those things, you got to look at it differently. It's for you and not for them. One of the greatest gifts to me was being able to see that a lot of the problems they have are the same. And I got rid of the thought that when I have the million dollar business, then I will be able to do this. What I learned is they just bounce back, bounce back from them faster or approach them differently because they have more experience in that arena. 
And they have resources they can tap to as well. Most of the time when people hit setbacks, what happens is you're alone by yourself. So you think you have to go back to the drawing board. But when you're surrounded by people who can help you look at it from a 10,000 foot level, rapid, rapid expansion and bouncing back faster and faster and faster. You know, someone asked in a social media post the other day, why do you invest in coaching? And people put all kinds of things. Why do you invest in mentorship? I can't remember what they said, but I'm like, I invest because I don't want to make the same mistakes they made. I want to skip that stuff, (laughs) right? You hear a lot of people in this industry, in the transformational space, talking about burnout, you know, at the, at the higher level, multi-million dollars. And it keeps a lot of you from telling the truth about wanting to make that much money. But the beautiful thing is when you invest at that level, you can see how things work. One of the things I notice with my clients is they come into my community. They get to see how a $30,000 offer works or how a $60,000 offer works or how a $10,000 offer works. And guess what? They are able to more easily sell their stuff now because they're not guessing what goes into a $10,000 offer. They know how to deliver one. Same for me, right? I want to know what a program looks like when people invest that six figures. I'm not guessing. I'm not like, oh, I need to put all of this stuff in there. I'm like, I did it. And here's why I did it. I understand it. So it accelerates that learning curve and I'll keep doing it over and over and over again. Again, it's a courageous decision, but it's one of the most powerful decisions I've made. Next one. I am intentional about taking time off, about refueling and resting and making space and room for what I desire to show up in my life and to live a life worth living now, to sleep now, not when I make more money. And this might sound counterintuitive um, if you believe that working harder is where the payoff is, especially when there are you know influencers out there who are sharing like, if you don't have a million dollars in the bank, then you shouldn't be sleeping. I don't aspire to do any of those things. I know $30 million Shamika works way less, especially in her business. I may have other things working for me, but she's not going to be working to the point where she doesn't see family or any of those things. And so I take time for myself now. And if you do have this relationship where you believe that hard work is where the payoff is, you like that you have to work harder in order to reap the reward. I want you to hear me because this is a hard decision to make. But again, it's a million dollar decision. Hear this. As your business grows, that relationship to how much you work in your business actually becomes sort of an inverted relationship, especially in a healthy business. And what it looks like as your business grows is you actually pull away from it. You're not doing it, especially if you want to build a dynasty business that survives and thrives without you, whether or not you get sick. If you die, the business still exists and can be passed down generation to generation. It doesn't work if it has you in it. If you're a part of everything. What you want to become a part of as as the million dollar CEO or the million dollar mogul who's creating a dynasty is you become the head of the business, guiding and leading and making decisions and steering and growing. And this is an area I'm still growing in. I was just creating a PowerPoint presentation the other day, laughing at myself and telling on myself during a live stream with clients because there's things that I can do because for a good portion of my business, I learned and invested in all these skill sets to do things. But time is precious to me now in this moment. And so I'm pulling myself out of everything, even the delivery of my services, which is another decision, the shifting of my business model in that way. And when I was making smaller amounts of money, my thought process was that people who did that were being, I don't know, not greedy, but they were taking something away from people by charging them to work with them and then having other people deliver. And it was from that lower frequency perspective. Let me share this decision with you. Again, this takes courage, but you can't be in every aspect of your business and you only have so much time in a day. What I know now and what allowed me to grow my mastermind to adding 30 people to it, right? 40 people in in my mastermind going from eight to 40 is shifting this belief and this judgment of those people. People aren't buying me. They're buying my methodology. They're buying buying my frameworks and my strategies that work like well-oiled machines. And I have coached and mentored people who know how to deliver that framework and that strategy 
like well-oiled machines. They are badass at it just like I am, right? I teach my clients how to fish. Most of my coaches in my programs are my clients. They're not people I found on the streets. They have mastered my methodology. And then I smile now because I realize I'm creating something my children will be able to take over and they don't have to be an expert at what I do. It's called a dynasty. So shifting my business model to where I'm pulling myself out of the delivery of it and then becoming the spearhead, the visionary that's kind of moving the masterpieces of the puzzle together and being okay with that. It doesn't mean anything about you except um, this. It allows me to serve more people. I made more difference in people's lives in the last 12 months than I probably had in the last five years because of this decision of allowing myself to serve a larger number of people at one time. The reality of it is if you don't do this, you become the bottleneck in your business. As your business grows, you become the clog in the system. And so I am intentional about releasing more and more things to other people so that the business can run like a well-oiled machine with or without me. Final decision, final decision. And this is a two-part one, final decision. And that is choosing to raise my prices and offering services at $10,000, $30,000, $60,000 to work with me. And we're looking forward to possibly creating um, a six-figure offer. Here's the thing. When you look at what it's going to take to create a million dollar or multi million dollar business, look at your current pricing. Is it going to, how is it going to take you to get, how, how much work is it going to take you to get there? How many clients is it going to take you? Some of you don't even have the capacity to serve at the level that it would take, but you haven't looked at the, at the numbers. I had to get into reality about that. But I also had to get into reality about the transformation being in alignment with my pricing. I had to put my prices in alignment with the value of the transformation. My clients were coming into my 12-week program and doing six figures. And there was a point in time that that program was $3,500. Now it's $10,500. There was a time you could work with me one-on-one for a year inside of my mastermind for $18,000. Now to work privately with me in my mastermind, it's $60,000. To be with me for a year and having my guidance, it's 30000 But look at the results my clients are creating. Their lives are transformed. They will never be the same. And everything that I teach them will be a part of every dollar that they make moving forward into the future, whether they remain my client or not. I had to get into reality about the, the value of the transformation. I've got clients who didn't do six figures the year before they work with me. And within 18 months of working with me, they were doing six figures a month. I've got clients who did six figures the year before working with me. And then I helped them create that money in a month, in a week. I had to get into reality about the transformation. Here's the thing. It takes courage to stand on your value. And this is where in my community, in Power Player Nation, we we value facts over feelings. I will be honest with you. Like I said, this is a transparent conversation. Every single time I have raised my prices to stand in the value of what I do and how I serve, I have been afraid that no one is going to buy. It comes up every single time. I'm no different from you. But guess what? Every freaking time, someone did. Every time, someone did. And it just became the new normal. It just is what it is. It just is what it is. Same with my clients. I've had clients who had an offer they were selling for 5000 That's now 25000 and people are buying it. I mean, 500 a month. So what would that be? I don't know. Yeah. 5,000 is right. Now it's 25,000. I've got a client who had a $10,000 offer. That's now 40,000. 
same amount of time, just 90 days. I have a client who had a 30K offer that's now $156,000. I have a client who had a $6,000 offer to work with her for six months. It's now a $30,000 offer and people pay her in full all the time because they have the, cor- the courage to make these decisions in alignment with the transformation. And it's not just that they created the offer. It's not just that they're taking, like doing it so people can pay them more and more money. They have clients that are happy as all get out and they are creating massive transformation and results for these clients. They refer over and over again. They love the work that they do. No complaints. Which leads me to the second part of this pricing conversation. Payment plans are also a huge million dollar decision. You know, for a long time, I had the belief that no one would pay me more than $3.99 a month. So again, that belief and that decision kept me creating programs at $3.99 a month, which kept me attracting people who didn't have enough money because the people who have enough money are looking to invest in the best. And what do they believe? That the best charge more. Now that's not the only reason that you wanna charge more, you wanna be able to deliver, (laughs) right? So when I was able to, this is what happened. I actually raised my price to $10,000 and someone hired me. And I was shaking in my boots to tell her it was $10,000. And when I said it was $10,000, she said, that's it? I thought it was going to be way more. And she was like, here's my credit card and paid in full. I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Right? Because I hadn't yet like really anchored in the value of the transformation. You know, a lot of what my clients pay me for is not just the strategy. The strategy is beautiful, but they pay to be in in the room. They pay to be in the energy of this courageous being that I am. I inspire courage and possibility. It's who I be. It's who God designed me to be. The very essence of who I am will cause you to rise just by being in my presence. So people invest to spend time with me, to be in that so that it lifts them, so they rise, right? Getting that understanding changed everything. So. Now, you know, we have, I mean, most, a lot of my clients pay in full, you know, or they'll do like a couple of payments, but then in the payment plans, they range anywhere from, on the things that we do have payment plans on from $3,000 a month to $5,000 a month. And there's no conversations around this stuff. Like there used to be with the 399s. What I kept doing is keeping my payment terms. um, I was expanding payment terms beyond the length of the program. I was extending the program beyond the results that clients were creating. So clients were creating results in the first eight weeks to 12 weeks. And I would make it a six month program so that I can charge them $300 a month or whatever, or $500 a month. And then they would get bored and then because the results were done. I get results really quickly, right? And then sometimes they would stop paying. So some of you are experiencing that where you have this fall off and you're only creating these programs at six months or longer because you want to make sure people, you want to give people longer payment terms. Now, all of our payment terms are within. So we have a $9,000 program. It's $3,000 a month. It just is what it is. So again, courageous million dollar type decision, but it changed the game. Totally changed the game. And just like with raising my prices, I had a fear no one would pay those payment plans too. (laughs) And lo and behold, they did. They did, right? And I do the same process with my clients. Again, this isn't just about charging more. Um, I already talked about taking, pulling myself out of acts, pulling me out of the programs. But what I want to talk about is you want to begin to create a business that allows you to work on your business, right? And be the leader of your business and have, so what I want to ask you is, do you have a framework? Do you have a methodology that people follow? Does your company have a culture? And that's a whole nother training. But if you have that in place, it will allow you to build this dynasty business. 
So systemizing what's in your brain and having processes in place. And we're continually doing this as I add more people to my team going, okay, Shamika, like right now I run my play big program, but I've been really keen on paying attention to, you know, you think that you're the only one who has the magic sauce, but I'm like, no, I've run this program 14 times. We're about to go into play big um, 15. This program has been run for the past uh, five years. Four or five years have been doing play big, right? It runs like a well-oiled machine. And so what I'm noticing is there's patterns that I pick up on, but I'm noticing that the patterns happen all the time. So what I'm doing now is documenting them so that it becomes a process that anyone can step in and hold people through as long as they have the culture of the company, right? And the value system of myself and the company along with them, it will work. Will you have the courage to do that? Or do you think it has to be you? What we have done to get us $2 million in revenue and the clients to get there or a million dollars in revenue, it's not going to work, right? This, the way that I think now about this has transformed what, I, what I'm doing because I'm, I'm looking at how do I build a $30 million company, organization, machine, dynasties? So the decisions that I make every day today are very different than even the decisions that I was making last year. And these, some of what I've shared with you today, and I know it was a lot, but I really wanted to like get it all out there. These are the hard earned lessons and courageous million dollar mogul type decisions that I've had to make in the process. And it's the thing that keeps a lot of you capped with a ceiling because it's a chicken and the egg kind of thing. You're going to have to jump and make decisions from where you want to be instead of where you currently are. So we've talked about up-leveling who you be to mogul status, right? And your mindset and your being and making decisions from that place. How do you think about time, your time and team and pricing and money from a million dollar mogul's perspective, starting now, starting today, these are the decisions that lay the foundation for your dynasty. And again, I hope that this has encouraged and inspired you to really like up level how you're showing up in your business because you think that it's, you just need to figure out how Clubhouse works or how Facebook works or how to go live. And that's going to, if I run this funnel or do this launch, it's going to be a million dollar launch. It's going to be a hundred thousand dollar launch. It's in your becoming. And this, this tough conversation I just had with you today about some of the decisions I had to make ahead of time before I even thought I was ready is what gave me the space to be able to create on the level that I create now. One last time, um, I wanna invite you to partner with me for my birthday, which is tomorrow. Join me for the fundraiser if you haven't already done so. Invite a friend, tag them in this video or share the video out or just send them the link. Because if they're building a business, they want to get access to these resources. A lot of these resources, when you go over there, you're literally going to the pages that they sell these offers from, and they're giving you a code that's only good during my birthday bash so that you can get it for free. All of the money is going to go to Thrive Rescue Home. We're activating the law of giving and receiving in our life, which is a huge part of, of the code to be of the millionaire code. And I'm going to match what you donate dollar for dollar. The minimum donation is $46. Here's the thing I forgot to share with you guys. It's not on the page when you get there, but every single person who donates will be spending a day with me in July learning my process and methodology for creating masterclasses that convert. The entire process, including how do you scale it? including how to know what to tweak, including how to make your offers, including how to create one, how to put it together so that it actually will sell for you and on your behalf. That is only going to be available to people who donate. I'm not going to sell it publicly. I'm not going to offer it to my clients who are already clients. And I typically do that. This is my gift for those who have partnered with me in this endeavor. 
I'm going to spend time with you, mapping this all out with you and showing you exactly how to market it, how to feel it, how to profit from it, how to fill it, not feel it, how to profit from it. And your minimum covenant agreement is a $46 donation or whatever you so choose to donate. And I'm going to match dollar for dollar. We're going to be a blessing in the lives of these kids who are being sold as slaves for sex all over the world. Okay, so let me do one more thing so that it pops up in the comments for you guys who are here right now. There's also a link in the comments section if you're watching on my business page, it just popped up. If you're watching on my personal page, you wanna go to bit.ly unlocking millions. There's also a link on the top of the screen above me. If you're listening on the podcast, just go to bit.ly forward slash unlock millions. It is case sensitive. You do have to capitalize, unlock, and millions. Thank you guys so much for everybody who's partnered so far. We have raised over $4,000. I'm hoping by May 31st, we can get to $10,000. I'm super stoked and super duper excited um, to be doing this. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm honored that I get to live in this way. Um, there were so many times in my life where I wanted to be a giver, but I did not have to give. And so I do have that opportunity now. And I want to bring as many people as possible along with me for the journey. At my event last year, we raised over $13,000 for various donations. I let people choose their own donations. Still getting emails from those, those places. Um, but this one, I picked the, the organization. And we're going to do it again and again and again and again and again. Because this is a law. This is how it works. This is one of the pieces to the code. I'm going to read it again. And that is the law of giving and receiving. And then that'll be a wrap for this for today. The law of giving and receiving states that in our willingness to give that which we seek, we keep abundance circulating in our lives. Want more love? Give love. Want to create more money and impact? Give more money and impact. That's how this thing works. All right, guys. I will see you. I don't know when I'm going to go live again, probably Friday because my birthday is on Wednesday. I may go live on Wednesday, hanging out with my kids and just do a quick um, something with you guys. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you next time. Go Shamika. It's your birthday. You're going to party like it's your birthday. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you so much for watching my show, my channel. Here's what I want you to do. If you really love what you've been listening to, I want you to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. No, no, really, leave a comment, like right now. I'm not gonna stop talking until you leave a comment. Seriously, leave a comment.